the creation. Once upon a time, before time, for God is not of time, but of eternity, there was God, and that was all. There was God, and no other thing, or creature, or the world, or wisdom. Only, there was God. And God put forth wisdom, and power and created a void, and darkness over the deep. And his spirit hovered over the water. And he called forth light. And God said, I like that. I'll call it day. And then, because he found his darkness lovely too, he named it night. The evening came, and the morning. And that was the very first day, and the real beginning of once upon a time. The second day began, and God said, I'll fashion an arch with waters, above and waters below and I'll call it heaven. And seeing his day's work, he was delighted. The third day he separated the waters below his vault, and called them seas, and the dry part he called earth, and he rejoiced. I've made myself a world, and I think I'd like some green things on it, something alive and growing. And with a flourish he added a wonderful touch. These are so good. Said God, that I'll fix, it so they happen over and over. And he gave each growing thing its own seed. And the day ended with his rejoicing in it. You may well have noticed by now, that none of these days dawned, but the fourth day. God said, my earth needs warmth and light, and joy for all the creatures I'm putting there, and he set the sun in the heavens, to make his day glad and golden. Still, said he, I love my night, and it should be dressed with no less splendor, and he hung the cool, soft moon. Then in a moment of pure, holy happiness, like a child throwing handfuls of confetti, God spangled his heavens, with stars to finish his day's work. Now, green things, and plants are lovely enough, and all very good in their own way, but God suddenly had a longing to make things that would swim and fly and creep, and crawl and croak and sing. He began his fourth day filling his sea, with whales and whelks, with abalones and octopi, with all manner of things that swim and float and flourish in the deep salt sea. Then he turned to his skies and created eagles and egret, and robins and rooks, and then he thought to himself that it would be marvelous, to have creatures that belong to both water and air, and he created all manner of waterfowl. Last of all that long day's work he created the songbirds, teaching the lark to rise toward the sun, on the ecstasy of her song, and the nightingale to haunt, the night with liquid loveliness, and he saw that it was good, so he blessed them all and said, you too shall have life and procreate with me like the green growing things. The next day God filled the earth, with all manner of delights, tiny green chameleons, and big gray mastodons, and every other sort of thing that creeps, or crawls, or walks, or runs em or skitters, or scampers, and to each he said, bring forth. Multiply in your own kind, and cover the face of my earth with life. And so he ended the fifth day. God began the sixth day, in a thoughtful mood. He looked on all his good creation and was glad, but it seemed to him it wanted something more to make it complete. God watched and pondered and then he said I know. I want something capable of loving, 
as I love someone to be my friend. So God created Adam in his own image. With his own hands, he took the dust of the earth and molded it into his very special creature, and he breathed his own breath into Adam and called him man. Now, after God created Eve, he looked at his whole world and found it very good. Then God spent the seventh day, in peace and joy, resting from his work, and contemplating with delight, all that he had made, so ever since, that day is set aside as holy and blessed.